Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week and a look forward at what might happen in the next week. And hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout the show. Well, stock markets have continued to move up this week. We'll call the U.S. market in a corrective week as it really did mostly move sideways. Um, there was a few down swoons during the week, but the market came right back and it didn't give much up. And the NASDAQ continued to be an extremely strong index as the FANG stocks all of a sudden got a second wind, and we've seen buyers in there. S&P 500 at the worst level of the week was down about 1%, but um, you can't keep a good horse down, and man, did it uh, start to really uh, move again in a steady way off of those uh, lows during the week. So uh, just uh, a really strong market that we're still looking at. Um, the uh, NASDAQ uh, gains about 1% on the week, and that's on top of of a 3% gain the previous week. So uh, overall, um, an up week for the stock market again. Dollar much weaker. Uh, second week in a row that we've seen that uh, as the um, decline in the dollar began to help the metals, uh, which were already firming. So we saw some pretty decent moves on the upside uh, in the metals. But worth noting is that was the dollar turn weak and these resources turned strong um, some pretty good lifts in the Canadian dollar and the Aussie dollar as now other currencies are starting to look attractive. So um, that is starting to be an issue, I believe. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So gold gained on the week about $24, a silver market up about 24 25 cents. And the big move for the week, and we really smoked the bottom out in this one, as copper moves back up towards its recent highs, up around 6% on the week and just just an outstanding week. It's adding us some important resistance levels, and we wouldn't be surprised to see copper have some pullback from here, but really a dynamic move to the upside for that uh, commodity. Oil market um, re recovered from a, a pretty good midweek swoon, uh, still down on the week over a dollar uh, as it's really become a corrective choppy market in there and we had anticipated there'd be a few more weeks of that and that seems to be pretty much in line. The bond market tried several rallies actually this week and failed. Uh, we're going to look for uh, here as we're doing this around midday to finish uh, about a few ticks up on the week. I mean really not much of a week just kind of a choppy sideways week. We actually think that there's another upside leg coming in the bond market just in the near term uh, and our um, our subscribers uh, know what we're talking about in there because we look at specific uh, rhythms in the markets uh, that's money flow uh, that we look at cycle rhythms to help us with and so we're looking for another rally in the bond market that all is just an interim advance in a big bear market, we believe. But this bounce that we're looking at could be pretty strong. So uh, we're going to be looking for that pretty soon. Uh, overall, world markets really strong. Uh, when you look at the FTSE, uh, based in, in pound terms, uh, 12 consecutive new highs in a row. So really strong there. Of course, the weaker British pound. And right now, that's probably the weakest currency that we follow. Really is good, really, for the economy there in the UK because, of course, it makes their goods cheaper and then stimulates their economy. So there's a lot of buyers there in the UK stock market. Um, if you paid any attention to the confirmation hearings this week, there was some really interesting stuff coming out of there. The uh, potential cabinet members 
are not Donald J. Trump clones. Um, I, I think that maybe he goes out of his way to pick people that are, you know, individual thinkers, and these are really some strong guys out there. There's lots of opinions that are contrary to the president-elect. Maybe that's why the dollar turned down uh, these last couple of weeks. Maybe the move in the dollar was way overdone, and maybe that's also the case uh, in the stock market uh, as it's been moving up uh, in this steady way. Um, in some ways, when when you listen to these hearings, these guys are hardline, especially when you hear what they say about China and Russia and potential trade negotiations, trade deals, and uh, China uh, in uh, their issue with uh, Taiwan and the islands that they're building in the South China Sea there. There's just so many things that could come up uh, that are um, issues for um, you know, the, the world economies and certainly uh, can be scary. So uh, the, the dollar weakness that we're seeing may be foreshadowing that actually, since there's a lot of contrary views, maybe the Donald Trump uh, program uh, uh, in a lot of ways is going to take a lot longer to put in. I've even read stuff that said that most of the stuff uh, other than you know the wave of the wand to get rid of Obamacare uh, is could take out to 2018 and 2019 to get done. Man, the market is going to get very impatient if that's the case. So, you know, as we said, we expect the near-term uptick in the bond market. That's usually um, a inverse move to uh, what the stock market is doing. So the, the stock market does that which surprises the most people, of course, most of the time. And, you know, the proof of that is, is when you look at what the stock market did off of the Donald J. Trump win, collapsing overnight in a shocking way, and then even the bigger surprise, reversing over overnight and then going straight up since. So, you know, that certainly was a surprise. I think that now, listening to most analysts out there, there's a huge amount of bullishness that I can see. <clears throat> and being that I see the dollar starting to give some back and I see the bond market, in my opinion, getting ready to rally, um, I got to say that the big surprise may be that there's a big drop coming in the stock market and maybe not too far off. Well, our uh, members uh, will see that in our, in our extended short-term view uh, because there's a pretty important signal there that works a lot of the time uh, in the NASDAQ, and I'm going to show that to them. So you might want to become a member. All right, so now let's talk about what actually happened uh, in the markets this week as we take a look at our 60-minute chart of the S&P 500. Let me get that queued up for you right here. And uh, this is a, a popular item because it really gives you a sense for um, what uh, happened uh, on an hour-to-hour -hour basis in the last week. Here is that S&P 500, and um, you can see that basically, you know, we thought it was going to be a down corrective week, and you can see that it really tried to be that during the week uh, as the market pretty much moved down in a choppy way throughout the week. You can see, though, that every one of these down dips that you saw right in here just brought in buying again, and this was just a big downside swoon that came right Right back up there that you can see. So uh, the, the stock market, you know, basically um, is a, a little bit lower for the week now. It looks to me on the S&P 500 uh, by a couple ticks. So we'll call it about unchanged. But overall, this is uh, a market that has just been in a sideways correction. If you look at Monday, uh, the markets did go down. The pound just dropped really sharply, and that helped the FTSE move up. Oil dropped over a dollar early and natural gas just got pummeled down about four percent uh, and uh, Iran news uh, came out their production was up and the rig count was up so that put some pressure on the oil market also now we got some big move in the morning here 
on Tuesday. You can see that right there. The small uh, the, there was a, a small business confidence index jumped to a 12-year high, and man, the market loved that because small businesses have really been on their butt based on Obamacare uh, really killing them and uh, all of the regulations and how hard it is to expand, and that really helped. And the stock market exploded off of that. But you could see that made the high of the week, and notice this evening star formation right in here a big up bar this uh, doji or shooting star and then the big down bar and that basically made the high for the week on Wednesday some more interesting news is uh, the, Donald Trump had a news conference as the markets move sideways overnight man this was just a horrible uh, conference if you ask me first of all he starts out attacking pharma pricing and that brought the market straight down it was getting bought up until that there was literally five moves in the market up down up down and up you can see that right there and oil took that big hit and then reversed and actually gained three percent on the day so it was a really interesting day in there <clears throat> On, uh, you can see on Thursday, Thursday was the day that the market took that big uh, swoon on the downside. Here's that talk that the stimulus may not come until 2018 or 2019. You know, after that news conference brought so little and just, uh, I don't understand these uh, these uh, news people. They don't ask the important questions. They ask the stupid ones. So it sounded like Trump had nothing to say about the important economic issues and the market was under pressure and it really got sold really hard in there but then there was a lot of fed speak and yellen was speaking that night and um, we saw the market uh, come back pretty nicely and you know just uh, after that big swoon was not down very much on the day but it really looked like the market was in some trouble right there and we were actually looking for the market to make a low on thursday or friday and then move up again so that was nice world markets were nowhere really moving Moving pretty sideways in here overnight on Friday, uh, but that FTSE puts on its 12th state straight record. A US PPI up about three tenths year over year, up 1.6 percent. Now that's no real inflation, but the bond market used that to pull to the downside uh, again. And the bank reports came out. Uh, we got three of them. Uh, Wells uh, Fargo still reeling from that scandal, and JP Morgan uh, beats on a ton of post-election trading in the bond market, which has really um, beefed up their profits uh, during that time. So uh, trading picks up in the bonds, they make more money, and they did well. Let's take a look in here at our calendar for the coming week. Don't forget that the um, on Monday we are closed uh, as we have uh, Martin Luther King Day and then the earnings reports uh, start to uh, leak out it's funny to not see Alcoa Alcoa since they did their spin-off no longer is going to be the first to report and it's the first time in decades that I can remember that so the banks were the first to report and you can see in here as we're going to get Tuesday morning uh, we'll get Morgan Stanley uh, on Wednesday morning we're going to get Goldman Sachs Sachs, a city group, and Ameritrade, Schwab, Northern Trust. So the financials are really coming out. U.S. Bank Corp. Netflix is on Wednesday. And man, I got to tell you, I got a real negative vibe about Netflix. Um, and uh, that uh, there is just so much uh, competition coming on. Uh, and uh, not that there isn't competition there already, but I mean, Apple's coming after them, BBC is coming after them, and uh, I got a feeling Netflix is going to be, and it's on my worst of the year list, is just going to be a bad story this year. Uh, Thursday, we get Union Pacific uh, and Key Bank and Bank of New York. Uh, Thursday, a big one, and American Express and IBM. And then Friday, we get Schlumberger uh, in the morning. If there are any big economic economic events uh, right uh, that uh, we think are important uh, it would probably be the consumer price index now there's there's nothing else really big out there but on Wednesday the consumer price index uh, the the PPI moved the bond market today so that's why I highlighted that really want to keep track of what actually moves what and uh, so that is a, um, a good look at what could be moving the markets during the week 
uh, as uh, the biggest news days will be on a Wednesday and on Thursday. So that is a look at what happened during the week on our 60 minute and uh, also a look at our calendar for the week. So now what we want to do is we want to take a look at the um, charts uh, of the best and the worst stocks for the week uh, as we always do and we'll take a look at that right here. So uh, we're going to start out by looking at the best gainers that were really in the material sector. Um, take a look here at uh, the first one we're going to look at. Our biggest gainer in our list of 320 stocks is Cliff, C-L-F. Um, Cliff, uh, you can you can see that we have our cycle rhythms marked off in here. So since this is the first chart that I put up today, I think what we're going to do is take a look at what all of this means. You know, these are cycle charts. Now, what are cycle charts? Cycle charts are uh, we measure cycles by uh, looking for repeating rhythms in the market. Essentially, it tells us money flow in a visual way. It's an art form, not a science. And in this, on this chart, we have the DBB also, which is the base metals that you can see right there. Um, and this, you can see cliffs and other material stocks move very close to the base metals. That makes a lot of sense. Now, you can see the rhythmic action in here. In fact, you can see this low, how it lines up to this low right there. We call that a trough. This one close here, this one almost perfect. You can see that. This one a little bit early. When it's early, it's bullish. A little bit early right in here, right on the DBB. And each of these rising phases right in here brought rallies. When they're small rallies, they're negative. When they turn down and break important lows, they fall through the rest of the cycle. So you know they're negative. When they move up above key cycle areas, you know that they're creating a positive pattern. And here is your stair step upward cycle movement. So essentially what you see is the envelopes right in here show you about what the ranges are. And th this is the idealized cycle pattern and this is the real cycle pattern that you can see. So it's a really incredibly good way to really understand markets. When you make higher bottoms and higher highs, you have uptrends and you can see that right now. And you can see that the uptrend we now have projected to be in a corrective mode through March or April based on what we're seeing right here. So then we don't believe that rallies will continue. And you can see that Cliffs was up more during the week and has actually pulled back from that. But this is kind of a nice little morning star pattern right there. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a little more attempt up there. But basically, these FIB confluences are the resistance, and you saw it pull back from there. And that's what we do uh, for our members. We give these charts to them. They get a link with all of our 400 symbols, with all this analysis. And then um, you can see what our projections are. And we're projecting this to kind of be in a kind of modest correction down into this period, uh, into that March, April, and then moving up again. So up 12% on the week. Uh, and then uh, we kind of think that it's not going to be any kind of a runaway here uh, at all. Valet, V-A-L-E, another one in this category. This is really interesting because <clears throat> we had pointed out that there was an inverted head and shoulders in here, and it had broken out, and our measurement was up here in the tens right there. So here's the breakout in the sixes. It gets up to 973 this week. And note that it also has this uh, picture of this correction in here into late March. So we're actually going to look at this stair step upward motion in here and say this is about topped. And we're going to look for a correction right in here. So they got strong this week. Cliff and Valet up about 12%. Uh, but uh, that we don't think is going to mean that they have a lot more to go on the upside. Rio Tinto, this one is kind of early. In, an, in a different kind of a cycle pattern. You could see it's out of rhythm. We call it out of phase with the DBB. And really only in its second or third week up, I could see Rio Tinto doing better uh, as uh, that 9% gain is pretty solid. And it looks like it's kind of early in the move. Uh, Alcoa, which we just mentioned, uh, also um, 
had good gain, and that was up about 7% on the week. And BHP Billiton, which follows Rio Tinto a lot, also up about 7% on the week. Another big gainer was Triple D, 3D, that is the 3D printer maker. That one gained 11% uh, on the week. There are There is talk of talks, uh, and the rumor, and I don't know if it's been confirmed or not, so I always say, but it's all over the news, uh, that GE had approached them. And GE has had a couple of fail, failed attempts of their own uh, 3D printers, so it's a pretty good marriage. The stock is a lot cheaper than it was before, of course, uh, as we take a peek here at 3D. The word is that they have hired an investment uh, broker uh, to, uh, uh, regarding these potential talks, and then the stock gets this pop to the upside. So you can see here also we have those cycle rhythms, and we're in this upward uh, movement right in here. This is a long, long way from its highs that it made. And uh, believe me, uh, if this stock gets taken over, I think investors will be disappointed uh, that it's going to be not at a very high level in there. Let's take a look at First Solar, FSLR. And uh, this stock moves to the upside also by about 7%. This is really interesting. One option trader, I'm not going to say his name, but I do know him, uh, made a point that the 20-day moving average has crossed over over the 50-day moving average. And uh, that supposedly is the only news I could see out there that gave it the lift, but up about 7%. Now, I'm not positive on this stock. I am really positive on some other uh, other solar stocks, especially CSIQ. Um, the, you gotta look here at this forward PE at around 50, uh, compared to CSIQ, which is more like about seven or six. So uh, this is not one I would buy, and they're looking at short-term moving averages. Well, as long as you're doing that, let's take a look here at the short-term moving average right now. And you can see that, well, this 89-day moving average, it seems like it tries to get through it, but then is not able to. Momentum turned positive right over here. So it's got, you know, got a few legs, but this is the spot it likes to fail from. And based on the weekly pattern that I'm looking at, um, I would, you know, guess that uh, it's going to run into some trouble pretty soon. So I'm not loving First Solar, uh, but there's some analysts out there that are talking nicely about it. Facebook is the next one we're going to look at, up about 4% on the week. Now, this is getting up further than I expected it to. There was another resistance right in here, the 61.8, that it moved up through. Now, the, the, the fact that it got down to this level, the 78.6, makes it a low probability that it's going to get up back to this old high, which is at that 78.6 extension right there. So it's at the 78.6 fib. Man, there's a lot of 78.6s here. And that's really the spot I think it's going to come down from. Of course, earnings are going to be coming out pretty soon. They're on 2-1, and that uh, is going to make uh, th this whole picture clearer. I'm going to guess that this one fails. Usually what happens is that when you spend such a long period of five, six weeks going nowhere in this cycle, and then you get a leg on the upside, you can see that's how it formed right in there, that what happens is, is that pretty soon you get into this topping period, and then it rolls over. And I'm sure wondering about this neckline right in here. I've been looking at that a lot wondering if there is a major top being formed. I think so, and I think that this big drop that you saw right over here is the uh, smoking gun, and that uh, there's a chance that Facebook will get shot. I'm looking for some downside in there, and uh, I think that there is a good reason, and I'm going to tell you again that our members section, we're going to talk about a signal in the NASDAQ that I think is important. Uh, there's a good reason to believe that these fang, fang stocks, and Facebook is one of them, is going to run out of gas. Last stock we're going to look at in the best of the week is United Airlines. Um, this one up about 4% uh, on the week, uh, uh, a little less, it's giving a little back right now on uh, good, on a real good, strong traffic uh, report. Now, I don't like the rejections in, that we're seeing in here. 
pattern. When you get these upside moves that start to fail or these stalling patterns right in here, and then you could see the failure right here, that is a sign that there is some rolling over going on. Now that would be early in this pattern, but we're gonna watch closely these levels right in here. Uh, if it turns down and gets under this 68 level, I'm not gonna like that at all. Right now it seems safe and the airlines are pretty much looking like they are starting to struggle. So here's that area that we're looking at on the daily pattern. Now we were just looking at the weekly. Look, note the abandoned baby right over here. And what that did was set a top and brought you into a month long correction. Now you're getting this shooting star top warning right over there, and it seems to not be able to hold rallies. So note this cycle pattern right in here. You see that? And this right in here, perfect rhythms. And then it's moving up again and failing in the same area. If it gets below this low number right over here, which is about 69 and a half, that is gonna give you the downturn. And what you see is that these cycles create head and shoulders patterns. That's how, cycle, that's how the patterns form, based on cycle rhythms. And this important neckline that's forming right in there, um, if you get under that, and you know, into this support minor support zone, that is going to be negative. And uh, I wanted to show you that in UAL because um, has some pretty good gains on the week, uh, and like Facebook and both of those, I am very suspicious of uh, that are having some trouble uh, moving to the upside. And well, Facebook's not having any trouble yet, but I think we'll run into trouble. But United is having trouble. All right, so now let's talk about the worst of the week. Interesting, you know, the worst of the week, again, what we've seen in the past has been brick and mortar retail. Um, really, really struggling. You know, the stock that I continuously talk about, and like I said last week or a week ago, uh, that um, to me, JCPenney and $2, those things go together. So every time I say JCPenney, I say $2. Um, I, think they're, I think they're headed to huge trouble. They were down over 10% on the week. And let's take a look at this JCPenney chart uh, as this is is uh, on our list of the worst for the year, worst stocks for the year. Take a look here at JCPenney. <laughs> Look at this thing absolutely crumbling here. I mean, you got to really think that there is uh, going to be some bad news coming out that they're really not telling us yet. Uh, like I said, I believe it's a $2 stock. The way these uh, cycle rhythms look in here, um, this is a tip off. Now, you see how late this one was? In other words, this is where the cycle rhythm said the low was going to go. However, it took an extra month on the downside. So that's a tip off that there's a lot of sellers out there. Then when it rallied, it could not make this high and turned down and broke under this low. That is a very, what we call negatively configured pattern and says that you're likely to have some continued downside in here. So down in here through late February, then uh, or later into March because these patterns are running late, some kind of a rally in here and then down, yeah, I would say $2 this year. I think this is the year that you hear the really bad news about JCPenney. I'd say this is a death swoon and a Sears in the same kind of a death swoon uh, while JCPenney down about 10% uh, on the week, a Sears down about 8% on the week, in uh, another very, very ugly looking pattern. And uh, Sears running out of lifelines uh, because they're selling off stuff and uh, you know, craftsmen gone, uh, selling off uh, more of their retail and there is not a, a lot left in there. Let's stay in this discussion of retail. GameStop, GME, which is, uh, has done a decent job in you know becoming an online seller, Look at this horrible pattern in here. So this shows you the advantage of the understanding the cycle rhythms. We can take it right down from here. Note this important low right in this area. So it's actually right here is where it tests that bottom. You can see that. So this rally phase gets you five weeks up 
it fails from that high and breaks this low. When that happens, you have a double top that's formed and a confirmed downside move. It falls all the way down through this distance right here, which is what it's supposed to do. You get a rally in here. It looks like it's making a base, uh, which is would be an important uh, way to create a good bottom, but then it comes down and tests that low again, and you know you got to be really worried that it was got back down to this level. It has another rally, and it can't get up to that level. Well, that finishes it, and here is your downward stair step movement right in here, and it's still in it. Online competition in this really stiff, and uh, their sales for December plunged 18.7%. Who would want to own it under those conditions? Take a look here. As you can see, the importance of that 89-day moving average. As it tried to get up through it, here's where you got your positive momentum right in here. It just was able to move sideways. The momentum turns negative right there. Note the arrow. And here is your little tiny bear flag. You can see that and then this massive high volume gap on the downside. So uh, this stock in here, you can see, this looks like it has, well, a decline all the way out till March also. There are a lot of things that look to me like there were declines coming out till March, and uh, that is a good reason to be concerned about a decline in February uh, through March here uh, for the stock market. So uh, that is, a look at retail. Now, uh, a couple other stocks that I uh, had talked about actually that uh, were in my worst or riskiest for the year was in the steel category. And they kind of struggled this week, even with some of the other materials moving to the upside. Um, maybe it's that the Donald Trump policies might take till 2019 to put in place. And I think that might be the reason that they started to struggle. Let's take a look here as we look at AK Steel, AKS, as uh, this was uh, down uh, for the week, uh, pretty good 5% uh, move to the downside here in AK Steel. And uh, now I really want you to keep paying attention as I show you these declining phases in here. As this says it was going to roll over and move down, and this is uh, late February to March before that bottom is scheduled to, uh, to come into place. So a lot that is starting to confirm a market decline into that period. Take a look here as as we look at X, U.S. Steel, also down 5% on the week. Now, this is interesting because you could see we were projecting a bottom coming here in an uptick, but it really extended out in this decline, so there's probably more uh, a little more correction coming in here and then further attempted rally. If this was all of the rally, man, this thing is in a lot of trouble. But what I really want to show you here is a head and shoulders top that is perfectly formed and has broken down. So what we do is we take the measurement from the head to the neckline right in here, and then we duplicate that and we project from the breakdown uh, of the neckline to the measurement level right over here. And uh, that projects breaking underneath this minor support level or to it around the $28 level. So this is really a bad looking pattern in here. Why is that? Because you can see this big pattern right in here makes the low right on time, right? You can see the smaller patterns, follow how the smaller pattern worked beautifully right there. And then rallies like it's supposed to, and then breaks down. That is a big, bad problem right there. And that leads us to believe that the steel stocks, which got way ahead uh, of themselves, are really uh, potentially going to um, be in some trouble pretty soon here if they're not already. Bristol-Myers BMY, uh, this stock gets a good size break. Um, this is the daily chart in there, and I want you to see the downside gap. Uh, the news in there was that, well, Merck's news that they had a really good uh, performance on a competing cancer drug. So this one gets a hit in here, um, and this pattern is suggestive of a decline all the way out into January on that um, daily pattern, and then this one on the weekly pattern looking like it's a decline out into mid-February. So um, all of these cycle rhythms are starting to look uh, pretty negative. Newmont is one I want to look at in here in the gold category. <clears throat> the reason for that is that 
you know, gold was pretty strong on the week, right? But Newmont actually was weak. And this pattern is not pretty. So if you can follow the beautiful upward movement that you saw right in here, and it followed these cycle patterns nicely, see the low right in here as anticipated, or it might have been this low right here. In either case, we've gotten a rally, and it's failing from the resistance zone. Also, a little more cycle lesson for you is that this is a negatively configured pattern right in here. And what that says is that, you know, if the rally fails, at resistance, it's likely to continue in this kind of a downward trend. Well, that's what it's doing in here as it fails from there. And we think that you're going to see 26, 27 in Newmont before this correction is over with. Take a look at the daily. You can see this is the weekly resistance and the sell zone based on that negative pattern. So we're kind of looking for this to roll over. And yes, there are magnificent cycle patterns. Note how the lows just absolutely beautifully line up where they're supposed to this rally comes into the sell zone and rolls over and this looks like a couple of weeks of risk right there uh, on the downside in Newmont so that is uh, the worst of the week I showed a lot of detail there today so I hope that you are enjoying that uh, a lot of people that watch this show are not that technically minded so try to spend a little more time explaining uh, what we do and when we look at these cycle patterns all right so now we're going to take a, a peek at our short-term view um, we do this every single week we look at the short-term view uh, for the stock market now we have a very expanded short-term view for our members and uh, if you want to um, be able to see that you could you know, take our trial uh, for half price. It's uh, the first month, only $16.50, and you're going to get all of our 200-plus uh, other videos in there. We put out some amazing videos in these in these last couple of weeks that, especially for option traders, we did uh, a video on uh, this week that was about developing a winning um, uh, strategic option uh, trading style. And I know there's a lot of people out there that trade options that are strong struggling uh, trading options, and I think you really uh, will benefit uh, from watching that. Really a good video. We did some really good stock sectors uh, videos where we broke down the retail into three categories, and I think that those will really help you. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Cannot stop a sneeze when you're on the air. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our short-term view uh, of the stock market. And uh, that is, uh, I think, really cool because it's pretty much done what we thought in the last week. Um, we thought that it would have a dip during the week. Now, the dip didn't stay down as far as we thought it would, uh, definitely. And that would um, not give us as much opportunity as we would have liked. But overall, it followed the pattern really, really closely to what we thought was going to happen. So this is the S&P 500 on a daily basis. We have it broken down into our cyclical rhythms that you can see very clearly. Repeating patterns at around 19 days, 18, 19 days. So here's your rally and sell off. You see that? That was 18 days to this point. How do I know that? Well, we have these cycle brackets right here. And if I highlight that, it will show you that uh, that uh, happens to be the RUT, the RUT, which I have overlaid on here, which also matches the S&P 500. And if you look at it, it says 18 bars. So um, that's how we know. You can see that the next cycle on there ran just one day past the 18 bars right there. And so that was 19. And each of those made up of two smaller cycle patterns in here. When the market is real strong, you can barely see the rhythms in here. When the market starts to give it up, it gets to be a little bit clearer. You can see that. And even right in here, you could see it gets to be fairly clear. Now we expected this decline to actually hold down over here a little bit lower. Our anticipated low was in the 12, 2230s. It got uh, not as low as that, uh, right down over here to about 2253, and then turned back up again. But where we believe we are right now is right here.
So if we're right there, then we're getting this rally. And it, you know we have a day in it only. And the secondary rallies, if you look at this, this was only four days in here before it rolled over. We think we're going to do something very similar. The question is, is it going to hit that, hit that Feb con, the Fib confluence at 2290 to 2300 first? You can see our projections in here. Remember, we talked about March, you know, February, March, April. There's a lot of uh, areas that stocks are likely to decline into based on the patterns we've shown you. So what we're looking for is a few days up this week, probably hit 2290, maybe not, and then fail and come down right in here. This is a key cycle support level right there. If it follows this pattern, and then hits the minor support here, we're going to look for a little potential another test up in that area. The deeper the next correction is, the worse the situation is going to be. So what that would mean is that, you know, if we fail in here and then come down to this level here, that's going to tell you that there is uh, the energy that was pushing up has hit this resistance and is rolling over right in here. You can see this cycle right here is one we're going to be focusing on as we get further in time and it starts arcing on the downside. So what we're looking at here is fail at 2290 and then come down maybe to 2250. So, you know, we're going to look for that kind of a range this week, 2290. 2300 maybe 2250 if it gets deeper than that under 2250 the suspicions will go up that the market has topped so that's what we're going to look for we're just going to call it that range for the week and uh the risk is growing that there is an important top forming and we're going to uh talk a lot about that in our member video which is uh coming up we'll be recording that uh, just uh, shortly as we look at the five different um, sectors of the uh, major markets uh, and look at the momentum studies in daily and uh, compare the interday um, studies of uh, all of the different five groups that we look at. So uh, really some great stuff. I really want you to become a member. If you want to get our rankings and setups, you become a level three member. Uh, and then you'll have all the videos too. And if you want a half price link for that, ask me for a level three link and I'll send that to you. If you just want the videos, then ask me for a level two link and I will send that to you. So you'll be able to see everything we do there for half price. That's it. I hope this was a ton of great information for you for the week. Uh, I did a lot of, you know, a lot of explaining, a lot of teaching. So hopefully um, you will be able to benefit from that going down the road. Uh, I hope you have a great, safe weekend. It is crazy out there, and I'm always wishing you great trading.